a little bigger than a smartphone. This is the scale of the new hardware-loaded Windows 11-based mini PC by Morphine. For the office, or for saving some space at home, I think there's only one way to find out whether it's a hit or miss. Let's inspect! Hi, 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 really good to meet you. And I hope you're doing well. My name is Michael and uh, we do inspect together fresh and cool tech for such a long time already. Now, portable computers, this is what we talk about today. Smartphones, they are in some way a uh, form of portable computers or of course laptops, which even have a monitor attached. But today the focus is gonna be on this. Uh, it's uh, the latest portable computer coming from the company Morphine, uh, this, this way around. So Morphine is called the M6. And spoiler alert, good Intel CPU, Jasper Lake generation, meaning it's still quite fresh and it's gonna stay up to date for quite some time. DDR4 memory and also 4K 60 frames per second output, which is very decent for such a small device. And the thing is that in terms of portability, see, it's um, kind of <laughs> almost smaller than a smartphone. So what does it offer in terms of performance? We gotta try it out. There are a whole lot of mini PCs these days, including such based on Android TV, Linux distributions and Windows, of course. They are either too expensive or not too good enough. And especially now, when space is more crucial than ever, with many of us working from home office, size does matter. But in the opposite way from what the saying is about. At 256 bucks starting price, Morphine M6 promises to solve a lot of challenges and I've put it under a lot of stress, browsing, benchmarking, heavy video production work, even gaming. Unboxing, and this is how small the retail box is. Nothing compared to traditional computers. And of course, don't forget that here we won't count on much of upgradability, powerful graphics or too much space for peripherals. The idea is quite different. I'm unpacking the configuration with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs storage. There's a premium edition with 16 gigs RAM and 1 terabyte storage. Visually, the box is identical, but good to know that you have a choice. There's HDMI cable, a power adapter, notice the USB Type-C standard used, excellent idea because you can use other chargers as a power source as well, and a VESA mount. Sleek design, very thin, and there's a flat front area only hosting the logo and the power button with a status LED. Cuts on the sides for proper cooling, and in case you wonder, yes, we talk about active cooling. And all these extra ports on the rear side which are available. The Type-C power input, an audio port, a Type-C video output, gigabit LAN port, HDMI out and three USB 3.0 ports. Sounds like we're on the spec-related topic already, so let me also add the details about the internals. Intel Jasper Lake's Celeron N5105 CPU, 8 or 16 gigs of RAM, 256 or 1000 gigabytes storage, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2 and all of that is within less than 200 grams. Depending on your preference, it may come with an OS. In my case, this is Windows 11 Pro. And since the operating system is pre-installed, you don't have to worry about drivers and setup. If you ask me about my favorite feature so far, I would clearly say this option of removing the cover here and being able to immediately place extra storage. So it wouldn't fit a 2.5 inch drive apparently, but it's designed for M2 drives, which are, yes, more expensive, but also a lot better performing. The other thing which I find great is the power source. So this is where you need to plug the cable. And if that connector looks uh, quite familiar, it is because that's a type C port. Well, some charges won't work, but those that can provide 12 volts, two amps, that would be a perfect fit, meaning that some even portable batteries supporting quick charging are gonna be good for feeding this thing with power, meaning that you're really portable and you can work from almost any kind of location. And as soon as you're done, unplug, put it inside your pocket and go whatever you have to do, just like with a laptop. There's yet another important addition, dual monitor support. The HDMI out and the USB Type-C both support 4K 60p, so if you're looking for an office solution to support two monitors, this makes it to the shortlist. Also, we have Bluetooth 5.2. Among the strengths is the much greater coverage area, 
Know that you're gonna need devices supporting the same Bluetooth generation to utilize the full potential, otherwise it's gonna use the protocol according to the client's version. I was quite eager to also try the wireless module. Inside there is the Intel AX201 radio and there are two dual MU MIMO antennas with up to 5 gigs transmission speeds, testing to see if it can well suit my home's broadband and it managed to reach the maximum speeds in no time. Being at a greater distance, it didn't drastically worsen the quality, so Wi-Fi reception is quite reliable with a more fine M6. If you like geeky stuff, may I show you the BIOS too, because you can set a bunch of CPU parameters, including the TDP. It is rather uncommon makers to leave access to BIOS on such a small TV box, so I'm happy that we have the freedom to make changes, if we know what we're doing, of course. I'm very surprised in the positive way, especially about the hardware, which is very decent, very up-to-date with current trends and will last for a long time given the fact that you have Jasper Lake-based CPU from 2021. The software experience is the other part of the story. Windows 11 Pro. The price for the license is included with the box price, so even for this fact alone, getting more fine M6 seems to be well justified. Very snappy experience, you're gonna notice how much different is the desktop experience to Windows 10 in comparison. There are of course a bunch of software solutions already, which can bring the start menu back in case you miss it. Feel free to reduce the animations too if you prefer even smoother experience. Synthetic benchmarks are probably not too interesting, however, for the record, fair to say that this CPU covers 75% of the performance of the iconic i7-7700, which is a few years old but certainly a very capable CPU. It's not as fast as the i-series of 2021, but definitely on par with those from 4-5 years ago. So I've tried instead some more practical tasks, like photo encoding and conversion, comparison is to a much more capable i5 Cabin Lake processor, which I use for video editing, you can notice that when it comes to multi-core tasks, the Celeron CPU falls behind. In terms of single-core performance, things are quite according to what Geekbench is promising. Another test for you, Premiere Pro by Adobe and intensive video encoding situation is also quite similar. This particular CPU has integrated graphics controller as well, we talk here about Intel UHD graphics and, well, gaming is gonna be fine for rather lightweight games. Anything more demanding, you will either have to play at lower resolution and FPS or just skip. While this PC is fantastic for almost any kind of usage, tasks that require serious graphics adapter are not something that are going to run impressively well on the Morphine M6. To the drawbacks, there is no microSD or SD card slot, and also I miss the availability of a USB port on the front side, but the rest of it, I don't think there's much to complain about, this is a very capable mini PC equipped with enough ports and loaded with plenty of hardware features to promise smooth and quick execution of your daily tasks. So, yeah, what do you think? Would you rather go for something like this, very portable and great value ratio and maybe spend some money on a great mouse, keyboard and monitor with amazing specs? Or you prefer to have the full pack in the form of a laptop, which would be obviously a lot more expensive, you can't choose the size of the monitor, but you do have one with you all the time. Uh, kind, of, kind of interesting decision to make, isn't it? Um, anyhow, I would love to hear your opinion about all of this and probably I'm going to keep the more fine M6 as a secondary computer, you know, it's very lightweight, doesn't consume much of power and uh, for what it's worth, that's, I think, a great system, but you might think otherwise, so any kind of opinion I'd love to read in the comment section below the video. And thank you very much for watching this episode till the end. Michael, been such a pleasure to explore some more cool tech together with you and look forward to meet you in the next episode. Bye!